boys and girls. Today we're going to read Jack and the Beanstalk, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about dialogue. There's a lot of dialogue in Jack and the Beanstalk. Dialogue is when characters are talking. You see the quotation marks, the bunny ears, around the words that the character is saying. And oftentimes when we're reading out loud, we change our voice a little bit to show that the character is talking. And you're going to see a lot of that in Jack and the Beanstalk. So just pay attention to listen to that dialogue when the characters are actually speaking. This is Jack and the Beanstalk. There was, once upon a time, a poor widow who had only a son named Jack and a cow named Milky White, and all they had to live on was milk the cow gave every morning, which they carried to the market and sold. But one morning, Milky White gave no milk, and they didn't know what to do. Cheer up, mother, I'll go somewhere and work, said Jack. We've tried that before, and nobody would take you, cried his mother. We must sell Milky White, and with the money start a shop or something. On his way back to market, Jack met a funny looking man. Well, good morning, Jack, said he. Good morning to you, said Jack, and wondered how the man knew his name. Can you tell me how many beans make five, said the man. Two in each hand and one in your mouth, said Jack, sharp as a needle. Right, said the man. And as you are such a bright lad, I don't mind doing a swap with you. Your cow for these beans. Go along, said Jack. Ah, but these are magical beans, said the man. If you plant them tonight by morning, they will grow right up to the sky. Really, said Jack. Yes, and if it doesn't turn out to be true, you can have your cow back. Back already, Jack, said his mother. Tell me how much did you get from Milky White? You'll never guess, mother. Could it be five pounds, 10, 15? No, she cried, it can't be 20. I knew you couldn't guess. What do you say to these magical beans? Plant them tonight and what? Said Jack's mother. Have you been such a dot to, and such an idiot to give away as Milky White, the best milker in the parish for a set of paltry beans? Off to bed with you. And as for your precious beans, go throw them out the window. So Jack went upstairs to his little room in the attic and sad and sorry he was sure to be as much for his mother's sake as for the loss of his supper. At last he dropped off to sleep. When Jack woke up he saw the beans had sprung up into a beanstalk that went up and up and up till it reached the sky. So the old man spoke the truth after all. Jack gave a jump onto the beanstalk and he climbed 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 and he climbed, and he climbed till at last he reached the sky. Jack walked along, he walked along, and he walked along till he came to a great big tall house. And on the doorstep was a great big tall woman. Good morning, mum, said Jack. Could you be so kind as to give me some breakfast? It's breakfast you want, is it? said the big tall woman. It's breakfast, you, it's breakfast you'll be if you don't move on. My man is an ogre, and if there's nothing he likes better than to boil boys on toast. Oh, please, Mum, Jack cried. I've had nothing to eat since yesterday morning. Really and truly, Mum, I may as well be boiled and die of hunger. Well, the ogre's wife was not half so bad after all. She took Jack into the kitchen and gave him some bread and cheese, when all of a sudden, thump, 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 the whole house began to tremble with the noise of someone coming. Goodness gracious me, said the ogre's wife. Come along quick, and she bundled Jack into the oven as the ogre came in. He was a big one, to be sure. Ah, wife, he said. What's this I smell? Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. He'll be alive or he'll be dead. I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Nonsense, dear, said his wife. You're dreaming, or perhaps you smell the scraps of the old boy that you liked so much for yesterday's dinner. Here you go. Have a wash and, and tidy up before it's time for you to come back. Those calves will be boiled before breakfast. Well, the ogre had his breakfast, and after that he went into the big chest and took a couple of bags of gold, and he sat down and counted. At last, his head began to nod, and he began to snore till the whole house shook again. Then Jack crept out of the oven, grabbed a bag of gold, and was off before you could say, Jack Robinson. 
When Jack came to the beanstalk, he threw down the gold, which of course fell into his mother's garden. Then he climbed down. Well, mother, he said, wasn't I right about the beans? They really are magical, you see. So they lived off the bag of gold for some time, but at last they came to the end of it, and Jack made up his mind to try his luck one more time at the top of the beanstalk. One fine morning, he rose up early and jumped onto the beanstalk, and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed, and he walked and he walked and he walked, till at last he came to the great big tall house that he had seen before. Then, sure enough, standing at the doorstep was the great big tall woman. Go away, my boy, said the big tall woman, or else my man will eat you up for breakfast. But aren't you the youngster who came here once before? Do you know that very day my man missed one of his bags of gold? That's strange, mum, said Jack, bold as brass. I, Darius, could tell you something about that, but I'm so hungry I can't speak till I've had something to eat. Well, the big tall woman was so curious that she took him in again. All happened as if before. Thump, thump, thump. They heard the ogre's footsteps as his wife and Jack sent him away in the oven. Fee, fi, fo, fum. After breakfast, the ogre said, Wife, bring me that hen that lays the gold eggs. So she brought it to the ogre and said, Lay it and lay and lay and it laid an egg of gold. Soon the ogre began to nod his head and snore till his house shook. Jack tiptoed out of the oven, nabbed the golden hen, and he pettered off. But this time, the hen gave a crackle and awoke the ogre just as Jack was about to get out of the house. He heard him roaring, Wife, wife, what have you done with my gold hen? When Jack got home, he showed his mother the wonderful hen and said, Lay to it, and it laid a golden egg every time he said, Lay. Well, it wasn't very long before Jack decided once again to try his luck up at the top of the beanstalk. This time, he knew better than to go straight to the ogre's house. When the big tall woman came out with a pail, he crept into the house and got into the bread box. He hadn't been there long when he heard thump, thump, thump. As before, in came the ogre and his wife. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. I smell him. Wife, I smell him. Do you, my dearie, said the ogre's wife. Well, if it's that little rogue that stole your gold in your hen, then he's sure to have got in the oven. They both rushed to the oven, but Jack wasn't there, and the ogre's wife said, There you are again with your fee fi fo fum Well, of course it's the boy that you caught last night, and I've just boiled for your breakfast, she said. How forgetful I am, and how careless you are not to know the difference between live and dead after all these years. Well, I could have sworn, muttered the ogre. And he searched the ladder and the cupboards and everything. Only luckily, he didn't think to search the bread box. After his breakfast was over, the ogre, the ogre called out, Wife, bring me my golden harp. So she brought it and, she, and he said, Sing! And the golden harp sang most beautifully. And the singing went on and on till the ogre fell asleep and began to snore like thunder. Then Jack lifted the lid very quietly and crept, into the, crept like a mouse on his hands and knees till he came to the table and he crawled up and caught hold of the golden harp. But the harp called out, Master, Master, and the ogre woke up. Jack ran as fast as he could and the ogre came rushing after. When the ogre saw Jack climbing down for dear life, he swung, the bean, he swung himself onto the beanstalk, which shook his, with his weight. Down climbed Jack and after he climbed, and after climbed the ogre, Jack called out, Mother, Mother, bring me an ax. Jack's mother rushed out with an axe in her hand, and Jack gave a chop to the beanstalk, cutting it in two. The ogre fell down and broke his crown, and the beanstalk came tumbling thereafter. What with showing the golden harp and selling the golden eggs, Jack and his mother became very rich, and Jack married a great princess, and they all lived happily ever after. So that was the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, and I hope you heard the dialogue and my voice change when the ogre spoke and when Jack spoke or his mother. They all sound a little bit different, and we change our voices to let the reader know that someone is speaking. And that's dialogue, which are those bunny ears that go around the words. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed the story.